Good morning, everybody. Good to see everyone here today. Uh, so before we begin our time of worship through song, uh, let us pray. Father God, I just thank you for this time that we have, that we can gather. Thank you for all those who are here. Thank you for this just a passage and your caring for all of us, Father God. I pray for those who are not with us, who are participating with us online. May you just bless their hearts, Father God, and may you be with them as they uh, view this. May you change their hearts, Father God. And in this room, Father God, may you just be with us, Father God, and may you work in our hearts in only the way that you can, God. So God, I just pray for this time. May it just be glorifying to you, this is just Amen. All right. So, um, if you're willing and able, please stand with me.
Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Let's continue on with the uh, reciting of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I want to make some announcements. Uh, some of you received in the uh, email, but uh, starting next Sunday, uh, we are going to change our max, uh, mask policy. It will be uh, optional, but highly recommended. So we're saying that you do not have to uh, wear a mask, but we are still highly recommending that you do. So you have a choice. Okay? Uh, it's not uh, mandated in the sense that you have to wear a mask, but we are still encouraging you uh, to wear a mask. Um, I know some, it's, it's hard so, um, uh, to, to wear a mask, so you, you, know, you don't have to worry about that. So that's starting next Sunday, and that will be the general policy for uh, indoor gatherings at our church facility. So it will be mask optional, but highly recommended. That starts next Sunday, uh, April the 3rd. Uh, this week's schedule, uh, we have a prayer meeting on Monday nights at 7 o'clock online. Our Tuesday night Bible study, also at 7 o'clock online. Wednesday night dinner at the Woos is at 6.30. And there is a five Friday night Bible study this week. I have down 7 p.m.-ish. Uh, hopefully those who are interested or who uh, regularly attend will receive more specific time details. They're going to a hybrid uh, study. And so uh, some people will be meeting in person and then some will joining online. So that's kind of why the I'm not quite sure, uh, but you'll find out the specifics regarding that. Uh, today, as many of you know, we will be having a beach walk, uh, and I hope you could join us. Uh, there's two components to it, as you can see in the schedule here. There is a 12.30 to 1.45 is the lunch at the beach or on the beach, and then there is a beach walk that's from, you meet up at 1.45 and we'll begin around 2 o'clock. There are two, uh, two kind of hiking routes. One's an hour long, we call it the easy uh, walk, and the other one is a challenging hike, which is two hours. So uh, there are two, um, but feel free to join us just for the lunch or uh, come just uh, for the beach walk afterwards, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to enjoy the weather. It's supposed to start raining tomorrow, so let's enjoy the sunshine uh, this afternoon. So that's uh, uh, for today, the beach walk. I don't have any uh, sites for it, but we do uh, have plans for the Resurrection Sunday uh, move le uh, leading up to it. So on Good Friday, we will be having a online, uh, it will be like a Zoom a service uh, that will be at 7.30 p.m. on April the 15th, and then we will have our Resurrection Sunday worship service on that Sunday, which will be at 10.30 as, as usual, and it will be joint and it will be in the sanctuary. So that will be for Resurrection Sunday. With that, let's, let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here, to be able to worship you together. We are so grateful that we could do this because of your Son, Jesus Christ. That through your Son, Jesus, that we could call you our Father. That through Jesus, that we could be brought into a right relationship with you. And it is in Jesus' name that we gather, and as we sang, we, we want Jesus' name to be lifted high. We are so grateful for your love for us, and for going to the cross to die for our sins. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for this world and, and all of us, of course, here in the news, watch the news. We know what's going on in Ukraine. We continue to pray for the people there. We pray for their protection. We pray for a peaceful resolution to this conflict. Father, we pray, though, it needs to be your intervention. So we pray for your miraculous work to be done, Lord, in this situation, that you will bring about peace. Father, I was reminded through uh, an email that I received, to, I pray for this specific family, uh, Dima and his, his family, that you will protect them and many like him who are uh, serving uh, as, as soldiers to fight for their country. We pray for your protection over them. We pray for the families of those there in Ukraine. And Father, we pray for the church there as well, that you will strengthen them, and especially during this time, that they could be a, a source of comfort and peace and hope to the people that are there. So please encourage our brothers and sisters who are in Ukraine as well. Father, we pray for our own church family. We pray for those who are recovering from sicknesses, who are dealing with different ailments. We ask for your healing to be upon them. Father, we pray that you will continue to bring comfort to families who are going through difficult times or are mourning the loss of a loved one. And Father, we do pray for our family and friends who do not yet know Jesus. We pray for their salvation. We pray for your spirit to convict them, to, to make them recognize your love for them and, and their need for you and that they will turn to you. So, Father, we pray for the salvation of our family and friends. Father, again, we thank you for our time together. Please continue to guide this worship service. We desire for you to be glorified, but we also come with the expectation that you will meet us, that you will minister to us. So, please, speak to us through your word. We thank you, Lord, and we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Long ago, a man sought the perfect picture of peace. Uh, not finding one that satisfied, he announced a contest to produce this masterpiece. The challenge stirred the imagination of artists everywhere, and paintings arrived from far and wide. Finally, the great day of revelation arrived. The judges uncovered one peaceful scene after another, while the viewers clapped and cheered. The tensions grew. Only two pictures remained veiled. I would like to share the rest of the story at the end of this message. At the same time, I want you to draw a picture of what you feel peace looks like. If you can see around the room, there are some sheets of paper and there's some pens. By the way, you can keep the pen, okay? Uh, but. Uh, there's some sheets of paper and pens there. And I want you to draw a picture of what you feel peace looks like. I'm not going to stop my message for us to draw a picture. So this is one time that I am giving you permission to doodle something while listening to the message. Okay? I know some of you maybe as, as youth, I know our youth today are not that way, but I know when I was growing up in this church, there was a lot of doodling going on <laughs> as we were listening to the message. So, but today I'm giving you permission to doodle something while listening to the message. I am hoping it will not distract you from the message. So it may be a challenge to multitask for some of you. And if you do not feel comfortable doing so, then, that, then just listen to the message. But I hope some of you will take up this uh, challenge to draw something that you feel looks like a piece. So this is what I call an interactive message. So obviously we are looking together today at peace. And today's message is titled, Christ Gives Me Peace. Let's look together at John 14, 27 and see what Jesus says to his dear disciples regarding peace. This is what he says. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. 
Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. As we saw last week, Jesus' farewell discourse in the upper room started in chapter John chapter 13 and continues through chapter 17. We saw that Jesus gave as his primary or first instruction to his disciples, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Giving this commandment also meant that Jesus gave him his love because the very commandment depended on the example of his love, even as I have loved you. We see in today's verse that later on in the same farewell discourse, Jesus gives his disciples his peace. What prompted these words from Jesus is important to know. Jesus had been preparing his disciples for his imminent departure, that is, his death on the cross, the burial, his resurrection, and ultimately his ascension back to heaven. He was explaining to them, and although he would be leaving, he would still be present with them through the Holy Spirit that will be given to them as their helper. Yet they had difficulty comprehending all of this. The disciples' uneasiness at the prospect of Jesus leaving them without clarifying what they did not yet understand elicited this word of comfort from him. Believe me, the disciples, many a time as we read through the Gospels, were confused. Jesus was telling them things, point blank, what's going to happen, and yet they didn't seem to understand. And even when Jesus said something to them, they interpreted it maybe the way that they wanted. So they were uncomfortable at the prospect that they heard Jesus was leaving, but they weren't quite sure of all the things that Jesus had instructed to them. Peace that Jesus offered was a common thing to say at a departure in that culture. It is like us saying goodbye when we are departing. Shalom or Irene in Greek would be used. Yet Jesus took his normal goodbye and filled it with deep strength and meaning. Or more specifically, he was drawing out the true meaning of peace. For shalom means to make complete and restore. So Jesus was offering them real and lasting peace as he spoke these words to them. So what does the peace Jesus offers his disciples look like? How is the peace different from what the world offers and how does this peace help them and how does it help us today note that jesus said peace i leave with you jesus had no inheritance or fortune to leave to his followers in a last will and testament here jesus gave them that is he was leaving peace with them this was the Lord's legacy to his disciples, something real which he bestows on them. More precious than gold or jewels, it is what everyone has been seeking since the fall and have never of themselves found. In their restless striving after satisfaction and pleasure and other things, they were in reality seeking peace, which cannot be found in the possessions of earth. For it cannot be found apart from God and can only be realized through a right relationship with Him. Jesus restored to wholeness the broken relationship between we humans and our Creator. Jesus said, My peace I give to you. Note that it is Jesus' peace. It is the kind of peace that manifested itself in Jesus praying on the mountaintop, sleeping restfully in a fisherman's boat in the midst of it being sinking, facing demon-possessed people with compassion, choosing as his disciple one who he fully knew would betray him, dealing calmly and gracefully with the unbelief 
and lack of his own disciples as he spoke to them of his imminent suffering and death and even praying for his murderers while upon the cross. The key to this characteristic of Jesus' life on earth is to be found in the close and intimate communion he had with the Father and his unreserved submission to the Father's will. Such communion and submission could exist only when there was complete harmony between the Father and the Son. The rule of his life of humiliation was, Not my will, O Father, but thine be done. This is the kind of peace that Jesus was giving his disciples. Indeed, Jesus' peace was not as the world gives, and he gave such peace to them. As such, this peace is not dependent on outward circumstances. Worldly peace is dependent on good circumstances. Yet that is not true for those who have fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. In fact, adverse circumstances often drive us nearer to God and lead us to cling to Him more dearly and trust in Him completely. And with such comes the peaceful and sure assurance that nothing has truly come in between our fellowship with God, who is our source of peace. So we see that the peace Jesus spoke of was obviously not exemption from conflicts and trials, for he himself felt troubled by his impending crucifixion. And he told this to his disciples, even as he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Rather, it is a settled confidence that comes from knowing that one is right with God. As the believer focuses on this reality, he or she can experience supernatural peace in the midst of trouble and fear, as Jesus did. As one commentary puts it, in the Bible, the word for peace or shalom never means simply the absence of trouble. It means everything which makes for our highest good. The peace which the world offers us is the peace of escape, the peace which comes from the avoidance of trouble and from refusing to face things. Isn't that how we often view peace? If only that problem would go away. If I was out of this trouble, if that person or whatever issue in my life it didn't exist anymore, it would be so much more peaceful or I would have peace. But one thing can be said, yes, peace is very much related to relationship. But that number one relationship in which we so desire to have or want peace is that relationship with God. And when we are secure in that relationship, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that could fluster us for we have the peace of God's presence in our lives. Jesus' promise of the gift of his own peace serves as the foundation for the command he gave. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. He repeats the command that began this chapter in verse 1. Do not let your heart be troubled, Believe in God. Believe also in me. We know that, at that as he began uh, saying these things to his disciples and as he was telling them and he was going to go away, that he was promising them that there was a place, that mansion, a place that he was preparing for his disciples. And if he was preparing such a place, that he would come again and he would bring them into that place. But he began by saying, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. But here he added, nor let it be fearful. The word for fear used here is always used of fear in a negative sense, as the opposite of courage. Those with a settled disposition of such fear evidence a lack of faith in God 
and a denial of his presence, his goodness, and his power. Those who experience such fear, which includes virtually all of us to some degree, may take comfort that as God's life grows within us and, our, and, our, and as our hearts are healed, we enter into the inheritance of Jesus' peace, which replaces our sinful fear. Let me state that sinful fear. For having such fear, which shows our denial or lack of of faith in God is sinful. And I'm sorry to say that such fear has manifested itself much in today's world. But Jesus here calls us to receive His peace. The grounds of this peace is the perfect love that casts out fear that is talked about in 1 John 4, 18. Because this love is ultimately a sharing of the relationship between the Father and the Son. It is based on our relationship with Jesus Christ. It is based on our relationship with God the Father. It is based on the fact that the Holy Spirit indwells us, that we have this intimate, this eternal life relationship with God. And therefore, we can live not out of fear, but we can be at peace. Thus, the peace Jesus is talking about is not the cessation of hostilities from enemies or an escape from troubles, but rather the gift of calmness and confidence that comes from union with God and faith in Him and His purposes. Although Jesus' disciples and us to a certain degree will face many trials and tribulations, and even share in Jesus' sufferings, we will also have his peace, for we will share in his own relationship with the Father. Such peace should indeed allow us to exalt in hope of the glory of God, even in difficult circumstances, as Paul reminds us in Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Notice that we have already received peace. We have received peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so that peace does not leave us. But it tells us, tells us here that in the midst of the trials and tribulations that we may go through in life, that we have that relationship with God, which is a solid foundation in which we may go through these various tribulations and difficulties. And that brings about our perseverance and proven character and ultimately hope because we know the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us to us. But at the same time, we know, I know, you know, that there are times when we're like pulling our hair out and going, God, I can't handle this. I don't feel much peace. I'm struggling. What do I do? So we are reminded that we can come to God with all of our troubles in prayer. In fact, we are exhorted not to dwell upon our troubles, or more specifically, to not be anxious about anything. See Paul's exhortations to the believers in Philippi. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
In another part of the Bible, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That is the picture of intimate relationship with God. That there is joy in that relationship. There is the concerns lifted up to God in prayer in that relationship. And there is that thanksgiving to God, knowing that God does answer our prayers, and He has. But here, we are reminded that we are to bring everything before the throne of God, before the grace of God in prayer. And God is the one who reminds us that He is with us. He's got it. Such confidence we can have. God's got this. And that should give us the peace. Again, the peace that Jesus gives us and has left with us is not as the world gives. For it surpasses all comprehension. Also, such peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus from being troubled or live out of fear. I don't know about you, but there are many times when I've faced different things. Uh, even last night, I wasn't feeling 100% well. It was, it was, I was, it was kind of weird, but anyways, I wasn't feeling well. And I'm crying out to God, God, help me out here. Meet me where I'm, I'm at. And when I do that, and when I come to God, there is this overwhelming sense of peace. There is this overwhelming sense that, like I said, God's got this. And the troubles, the difficulties, whatever it is that had surrounded me just a moment ago seem to dissipate. It is amazing. There's no explanation for it. Like it says, it surpasses all comprehension. Sometimes I analyze this. I'm like, okay, well, how do I, you know, like... You know, don't we do that? We're such control freaks about everything. We try to want to know how everything works out. And yet, I love this because it says in the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension. You can't even explain it. You're trying to analyze this peace. You can't analyze it because it surpasses all comprehension. It's something that God gives to you. But more importantly, I believe it is the presence of God. When God comes in and says, I'm right here. I'm with you. Don't be afraid. Do not fear. I started today's message with a story about a man seeking the perfect picture of peace and announcing the contest to produce this masterpiece. I also asked you to draw your perfect picture of peace. Could you pass those pictures forward so we can see them together? Any of you draw some pictures? Can you just pass them forward to me? Thank you, can you collect them for me? Thank you, appreciate it. All right. Feels like show and tell. I should actually have all of you come up here and go, this is my picture, and explain it, you know? But we won't do that, we'll just go in. And I don't know how well you can no? All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. So here we go. Picture of peace. It's like uh, going out there in the waves. Is that right? Surfing. Yeah. Cool. We have a blank piece of paper. All right. That's good. There's no nothing to, to write. To, that's it. Heaven, the cross, the heaven. It's a cute one. It says, it says Holy Spirit, right? There's all kinds of things that might scare you, but or sad things, but then you know God, and Jesus. Oh. I should have done it like this so that people can see. Okay. All right. Um, this is, I think, a sunrise with the shore. Is that right? Yeah? Sunrise with the shore. Peaceful. I enjoy that. I, go, I like going to the beach just to watch the sunset or run some kind of peace I leave with you. I think it's going a lot of things here. Happy. 
boy, I, I, I might need a whole hour to analyze this one, but that's, that's good, that's good, thank you. Let's see if I have, oh, did I get everyone? Did everybody, did everybody see the ones that they threw out? Oh. I have some scripture passages, lots of scripture passages here. Okay, Revelation 21, 22, John 14, 27, John 13, 37, Romans 5, 1 through, looks like the notes from today's message. <laughs> That's good, thank you. If I missed someone, I'm sorry, okay? But thank you for sharing those things. So let me get back to the story. Thank you everybody for submitting that. So I mentioned that the great day of revelation arrived and the judges uncovered one peaceful scene after another while the viewers clapped and cheered. Now there were only two pictures that remained unveiled. As the judge pulled the cover from one, a hush fell over the crowd. A mirror smooth lake reflected lacy green birches under the soft blush of the evening sky. Along the grassy shore, a flock of sheep grazed undisturbed. Surely this was the wind. But the man with the vision uncovered the second painting himself. And the crowd gasped in surprise. Could this be peace? A tumultuous waterfall cascaded down a rocky precipice. The crowd could almost feel its cold penetrating spray. Stormy gray clouds threatened to explode with lightning, wind, and rain. And in the midst of the thundering noises and bitter chill, a spindly tree clung to the rocks at the edge of the falls. One of its branches reached out in front of the torrential waters as it foolishly, as it foolishly seeking to experience its full power. A little bird had built a nest in the elbow of that branch, content and undisturbed in her stormy surroundings. She rested on her eggs, with her eyes closed and her wings ready to cover her little ones. She manifested peace that transcends all earthly turmoil. Such is the peace that Jesus apostles inherited from Jesus. And such is the peace that we can all experience through our restored and right relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. It is a reality for us because of the Holy Spirit given to us that fills our heart with Jesus' peace who reigns in our lives as the Prince of Peace. For God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. And Jesus has promised his disciples, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He has given us his peace. So let us rest in our Lord's peace, knowing that he is always present with us, whether it's in good times, or bad times, whether it's in what we call peaceful times or war times, or whether it is what it is right now we understand as a time of God's grace, and hopefully we don't have to experience it, but even in what we call the great tribulation or times of tribulation, the only true peace and confidence that we can have is found in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ alone, which brings us into a right and complete relationship with God the Father. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the relationship that we have with you. That indeed, that is shalom. That is one of wholeness and, and completeness to be in right relationship with you. And we know that the whole world is longing for, is seeking for such peace. But it has not found it because there is this restlessness that we all have when we are distant from you. 
But Father, we also thank you that this peace that you give us in our right relationship with you brings us into a right relationship with the people around us as well. Because you de dealt with our sin and you deal with our sin. Sin is separation, it is death. But Jesus, you have given us eternal life. And we are so grateful that you have brought about your peace into our lives. Father, please help us to be peacemakers. As the Bible tells us to, blessed are the peacemakers. That we would be peacemakers. That is, we would be ones who share your peace with a world that so desperately needs to know you. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters here. And we know that our lives, different circumstances we face are different. But we all have different struggles. We all have different things that just cause us to, to be anxious. But in those moments, Lord, help us to not run away from trouble. And definitely not run away from you. But to draw closer to you, Lord. And to seek you and to find rest in you. For in you and you alone are we given true peace. So Father, we pray for such peace in our lives. And we pray that through us, that those around us will experience your peace as well. We thank you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you are willing and able... Let's stand together as we sing one last song of response.
The benediction today is taken from 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Hear the words of God, which is good words. It says, Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. The Lord be with you all. Amen.